Clearly, we should architect a society without discrimination, a society of inclusion. Once again for this show, I did something I've never done before, climbed a sheer rock wall. I did it with one leg, following a guy with no legs. Who says we can't? My name is Hugh Hurt. I have a PhD in biophysics, and I direct the biomechatronics group here, the MIT Media Lab in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We build robots that attach to the body to enhance physicality. I started climbing when I was seven years old. At first it was on mossy cliffs. The hiking got steeper and steeper until it became mountain climbing. When I was 17, I went to New Hampshire with my climbing partner at the time, Jeff Batzer. And our goal was to climb uh, Mount Washington in the winter, it was January. We got to the top of Odell's. The weather got worse as we climbed and uh, we made the mistake of continuing towards the summit of the mountain in what was quickly becoming weighed out conditions. Although we just went five minutes from the face of Huntington's, it was enough to, to become disoriented. After several days of effort, we got within a few miles of a roadway. Cam Bradshaw had been out snowshoeing for the day and came across human footprints and uh, tracked them to our cave. When we arrived to the Littleton Hospital, we of course had severe hypothermia. We also had severe frostbite. After months and months of effort by the medical teams, frostbite was so severe that uh, both of my legs were amputated to below the knee. When we were taken off the mountain, we were also told that a rescuer died. Um, he was struck by an avalanche, his name is Albert Dow. That news, combined with the knowledge that we were, we were going to live, because we were certain we were going to die when we were on the mountain, um, was, a, was this strange juxtaposition of emotions. I thought it would be an insult to the memory of Albert Dow to give up, to pity myself, to stay in the wheelchair. So from all those came this enormous swell to walk again, to climb again, and perhaps to do it better than I've ever done it before. I realized in that beginning phase that that prosthetic technology was, was rather crude. When I was giving these artificial limbs that were passive, with, without any computational intelligence, without any sensing, without any motor technology, I was like, really? Really? This is it? So I, I very quickly dedicated my life to design, to making artificial body parts better and better until they're the point where they're, they're emulating and they're actually bionic. So, so today that's the mission of my MIT research group, is to build bionic appendages that, that emulate normal physiological function and perhaps even extend beyond what nature intended my approach to getting people to, to believe again, uh, to dream big again. I try to, to help them visualize is what their life will be uh, once they go through the rehabilitation process, once they fully heal. That's best expressed by me just, or someone like me walking in the door and running and jumping in front of them. And just say, this is, this, you'll, you'll be able to do these things again. You'll be able to do everything that you want to do. But by the way, to get there is going to be hard. But just remember you're going to get there. I imagine a future where leg amputees could run faster than persons with biological limbs. Um, a world where seeing impaired or no longer seeing impaired. A future world in which technology is so advanced and sophisticated that people with unusual minds and bodies would no longer be disabled. I think at the, in the twilight years of this century, we will have a world in which disability no longer exists. With a straight face to label me as disabled. I have the condition of limb amputation. The 
but because of great bionic technology, I'm not really disabled. That will be true later in the century across all forms of what are today disabilities.